Right, g'day there. Richard Musgrave Evans here, and welcome back. Now today, I'm back in the old shed, the beautiful rustic still life shed. Got plenty of good stuff around me. I'm still working on the rustic still life theme. I'm gonna do a few more of them before I get back into the landscapes. And uh, what I've done is I've got another pair of old boots, beautiful old leather boots. Hear those crows? <laughs> Classic. All right, got another pair of old leather boots, and uh, I'm gonna get stuck into them. All right, fairly simple palette again today. I've got cobalt blue, burnt sienna, alizarin crimson, yellow ochre, and titanium white, and palette knives. Maybe a tiny bit of brush here and there, but mainly just the palette knife. All right, so I've just drawn in a quick sketch for the composition, and now I'll get stuck into it. Okay, so what am I gonna do first? Go for the biggest differences. There's a few darks here and there, so I'll start with a bit of burnt sienna, and you can see what I'm doing, good. Cobalt blue, maybe a little bit of alizarin crimson to darken it off. I want to get the darkest darks. A bit more blue in that. Okay, so let's stick some darks in here and there. Just put in the darkest darks in first, and then I'll work the lighter colours, the lighter tones over. You can put in plenty of dark and you can easily paint over the top of that, so that's not, not a worry. Okay, so we've got that in, that in, that in. There's not tons of darks in it. Now the background, I'm just going to do, do a general vibe of the shed, which is kind of a corrugated, corrugated iron come dust come whatever, so... Just a nice out of focus sort of background. I'm not going to go literally every detail in the background. Go for the basic overriding colour and tone. Alright, so that'll be blue and burnt sienna again. A bit of white to lighten it. A bit of yellow ochre as well. Just have a look what I've got here. Not too bad. A bit more burnt sienna to warm it up. I'll vary it. I'll have light, warm bits, cool bits, all sorts of bits to uh, create that feeling of warm and cool colour contrast. A bit more blue and white. Got a bit of a rickety old. Uh, Easel going today. <laughs> Always good. More blue and white. Burn sienna and white. So I'm mixing the two together, half mixing, so you're getting the blend of the warm and cool, as you can see. Now what I'll try and do is just Fairly big one today, so so I'll just try and wind up a bit the pace, get it cut a little quicker. Once I get this all blocked in, there's some nice half mixing there. Look out for a bit of yellow ochre over this side. There's a bit of light coming in from the door over there, which is making it there we go, it's a little bit lighter over here. So I'm just lighting it up with a bit of yellow ochre and white. It's creating some nice colour variances through the picture. So, 
Ben Sienna's blue combination of all three, the Ben Sienna, Cobalt Blue and the Yellow Ochre. Getting it all blocked in. Oops. Okay, now, let's have a look at what my levels here are. Right. Bit darker here at the base. Come down a little bit. Yeah, something like that. What are we working on here? Let's have a look. Yep, yep, yep. A bit more burnt sienna on blue. Burnt sienna. Just trying to get the edge of the table established where I want it. of the bench top itself. What I'm actually going to do today, I've got a nice light tone here, metal. I'm going to paint it that tone, but it's a very similar tone to old timber, so I might even turn it into old timber as I'm finishing off. And that's where you can get the character, you can bring out the character. Of that tone and chroma and colour or whatever is pretty much the colour of timber, right? But I could make it look like metal just by putting subtle finishes at the end, or I could turn it into timber just by putting the character of timber at the end. So, I've got plenty of old timber around me. So I've got things to look at. So I'm thinking, that's what I'll do. I'll, I'll turn it into a timber bench to add a bit of interest. So I've got burnt sienna, yellow ochre and white here. is good for getting a lot of colour in instead of thin layers. Yellow ochre, burnt sienna, white. This will be the edge of the Bench top, bench down yellow on white. Now, what I might do is, and I'll just lighten this tone a bit, a bit more yellow ochre and white. Just trying to get rid of all the white first, obviously. Get uh, go for the biggest differences. The biggest differences is that the canvas is completely white. I'm trying to get rid of that. Working on a bit of draftsmanship as we go, slowly refining things. Very generalised to start with. Now I'm going to put the edge of a bench there, so I'm going to put a shadow under it. There's no edge of a bench there, but if I go for a dark tone, burnt sienna, shadow bulb blue, mix her up. In fact, this easel's pretty rickety. Let's get that paint in. this. Now I'm going to grab a brush if I've got one, hang on. I'm going to grab a brush just to neaten the edges. So I've got the lovely clean white edges and the brush is very good. A bit better than the palette knife just for going like so. So just bear with me for a minute. I'll just get 
I can paint to the edges without going over and whatever a little bit quicker with the brush. That way you can choose to frame it or not frame it, like I've said in the past. But it gives you a neat edge, so either way it'll look great. But later on when it's dry, you can choose to just extend the colours around the edge if you want to. You can... It's actually gone around the edge a little bit there, which is something I did not mean to do, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm going to work with that. Like so. Quickly get all these in. It's a fairly large painting. It's got a bit of size to it. I'm finding pulling all straight away from the edge of the canvas like so doesn't seem to go around, it just seems to go up to the edge and not go around, which is what I'm after. Okay, so I've got that. Now, just get that yellow ochre bench top similar. What have we got here? Just a bit of that, just throw it up, didn't quite go to the edge enough there. Alright, that's about all I'll do with the brush, I reckon. Alright, so right. just pull that together a little bit. Just making it a bit out of focus so it's not so much of a dominating edge, we can work out what we want to do later. Now just get rid of those brush marks that have come in because they just don't seem to match the palette knife marks so I'm just going to quickly go over that. Got a few different marks here and there. In and out of focus, hard and soft, lost and found and all that. Lovely. Should have uh, had an extra clamp on there. I don't know if I've got one in. I might have. Just wait there. This might put an end to all that rickety noise. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Something I should have done earlier. All right. Still doing it. Look at that, what do you do, eh? What do you do? Just work with it, I guess. Work with it. So just getting rid of those whites, working on the edge of that imaginary bench. <laughs> So we've got that. Now I'll just step back and have a look what I've got. Right. Got that clean. Just going to soften that a little bit there. Well, that'll do for now. Now it's time to paint the boots. All right. That'll be a burnt sienna. There's a lot of subtle tones in those boots. Subtle browns and beautiful earthy tones, even cool blues, contrasting blues. There's cold light bouncing around from the outside, so let's just have a look. Burnt Sienna with a bit of blue and white, just to grey it a bit. Okay, so I'm just going for feel here. Get that boot in there. Just 
give you a colour. Now, I like, this boot, I like having the fact that I've got that one on its side because that adds a bit of uh, difference and some interest. You can get to see the beautiful underside of the boot, which has got the, the classic leather sole on it with the nails and all that. So you get to see all that, which is great. So that's why I like these characters of these old boots. They've got great things like that to work with. So here I am again doing all this subtle detail with the crazy big knife. <laughs> but I just like to work like that. A bit more orange. May introduce a bit of that alizarin crimson, just to intensify the colour of the elastic side here for a starters. And it's just a little bit richer. Now we'll just come down into there. A bit more there. Just getting the shape first. Very important to get the shape of a boot right. It's a bit like the portrait of a face. A boot, if it's slightly out, will not look like a boot. It'll look like who knows what. So you've got to be objective in your shapes because that boot's on its side. It definitely doesn't look like the shape of a boot from this angle that I'm looking at. But you're just objective. Whether you're painting, it doesn't matter what you're painting, you just look at the objective colours and tones and forms. more red and yellow ochre to intensify the elastic side there again. Just getting rid of those whites. Okay. Slightly smaller knife, that's probably a good idea. <laughs> That way we can start working, pulling paint around, moving it here and there, going for those subtle changes. So I'll go for a dark tone here, burnt sienna, cobalt blue, just to restate the top of that boot. There's a bit of elastic coming out the side here. It's rickety old elastic because they're fairly old boots, so the elastic is stretched. has classic shapes about it, not just uniform like a brand new one. So I'll just work on the edges here a bit. Just stick a little bit of a light, always going for what's most obvious. Now I'll just take a bit of paint off there. These tags here are very obvious to slip your boots on. A bit lighter. Take some of the paint off. Now yeah, there's some subtle blues as well as everything else. Very subtle tonal contrast in this painting. bit of blue along here to start with. Take some paint off. Going for the big impression. So, 
Constantly working around, refining, refining. Going for the biggest differences, burnt sienna. The other way through a white. Clean up the edge of that. Restate some of the dark tones in there. Take a bit of paint off there, make it thinner because I'm about to put a lighter tone. Where are we? Just under the boot here. Like I said, the grassmanship is very important, so you've got to concentrate on that bit. Some more dark. It's quite a cool dark. It's got a fair bit of blue in it, so I'll work with that. Burn sienas and blues and all that great stuff. Pull that up there, get the draftsmanship. Constantly working around refining, constantly refining. Lightening that tone. The further you go, the more you observe. You make a statement and work out what's wrong with it. Refine it. All that sort of stuff. <laughs> okay. Getting those drafts and ship with those boots can be fun. Lighten the tone. There's a real light tone running up the side here and some wiggles. Pull the paint into it. light hitting the edge of the boot here from outside take out the whites and the blues quite a light tone here cold version and then a more of a scuff version on the edge of the boot there where she's been scuffed around a bit. Just adding all the light highlights as we go. underneath this boot here where it's been scuffing along on the ground. So much subtlety in these type of paintings rather than the big the big block detail. That's the high heel, the Cuban heel. Burnt sienna and blue to get it dark. Just squint your eyes down a bit so I can see the edges where they're all meeting. Stand back and have a quick look at what I'm doing. Right, so that's good, but what I'm going to do after standing back, I'm just going to lighten the bench top a bit. So I'm going to put some more yellow ochres, burnt sienna, and whites with a little bit more white in the mix to lighten it. Just to get a nice 
light tone. Quite a light tone in the focal area so your eyes are drawn to it. Some beautiful colour mixing there, like just in and out of focus, different colours. There's a bench top here, put that out a bit. Little white and yellow over just to What is that noise in the background? Just working on the edge of that bench a bit. Just soften the underside by pulling the paint up. Really trying to give the feeling of an old timber bench. Cleaning the knife each time and pulling that dark tone into the lighter tones. Soften, add a bit of grain here and there, with a few darker tones and lighters. Just giving the feeling, trying to give the feeling of old timber. Scuffs and abrasions and the old classic workbench. Alright, let's have a look what we've got, eh? Hey? What have we got? What have we got? How's that look?
All right, well, that's pretty much it. Got the big impression now. Got the right colours and tones and uh, got the feeling of old leather, a subtle, warm and cool contrast inside this beautiful rustic shed. So, yeah, I'm pretty happy with it now. So, I'll get the camera off and we'll have a closer look. No worries, thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.